Okay, folks, I'm calling this Functions in the Math Web, and it is 9-26-16 on Monday. Um, your vocab bank for today is um, domain and range, where domain is all the possible inputs, uh, and range is all the possible outputs. So all the X's are domain, all the Y's are range. If you need to pause and write this down, pause and write it down now, because I'm moving forward. Uh, in part one here, we're going to say review, just kind of review of functions. Uh, in A, we're saying, hey, a function is an input-output machine where each input has a consistent, unique output. Um, I like the word consistent a little bit better today, so I'm going to say that. Um, so a function is an input-output machine where each input has a consistent output. Um, so if f of x equals 4x plus 1, uh, we have this f machine that is inputting x's and the rule is 4x plus 1. Uh, if we are asked what f of 3 means, it means go to the machine and input 3. Uh, we have some math we can start doing. So f of 3 equals 4 times 3 plus 1. I've inputted 3 in for x. Uh, this gives me 12 plus 1 or that f of 3 equals 13. Uh, and we like this notation because it's telling us a lot of stuff all in one sentence and uh, it's pretty cool to be able to uh, show all the results like this. So F stands for the we used um, an F machine. If we want to find the F machine, hey look it's up here. Okay, um, We took 3 as the input 3 is input so all together, we are saying that this is f of 3 is, uh, and then what did we get as our output? Well, we have this nice 13 as the output. Okay, so f of 3 is 13 would be the statement that our function notation is telling us. Okay, again, we get to look at the F machine was used uh, with an input of 3, and we got 13 out. Okay, the other things that we might see is what do we do when we're given F of X equals 7. F of X equals 7. So what we do for this when it's telling us F of X equals something we replace it as the answer. So we say 7 equals 4x plus 1. Okay, the 7 becomes the answer. It is the output. And so we want to find the input that generated 7. Once we've set up the equation, all we have to do is solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 on each side. This gives me 6 equals 4x. Um, let's see. I'll divide by 4. Divide by 4 on both sides. Um, this gives me 6 fourths equals x. Um, or I can simplify that to be 3 halves equals x. Okay, so what that means is that f of 3 halves equals 7. Okay, f of 3 halves equals 7. Um, so on your own, I would like you guys to try f of x equals 9. Uh, and we'll talk about that in class tomorrow. So try that one on your own right now. Okay, the next thing to talk about is functions and tables. How can we tell if something or if a relationship is a function just by looking at the table? Um, so in part A, what I want you to do is copy down these two tables. Okay, these two tables. Where on table left or on the table on the left, we're dealing with iguana lengths. And on um, the right, we're dealing with uh, the giraffe heights. Okay. Uh, and what we can do is once we're looking at the tables, notice that on the left side here, we have two of the same inputs of a four-year-old iguana. Um, and what it gave us was um, a 37 length and a 40 length. 
Um, since we got two different answers, it is not consistent with this idea that each uh, input gives a consistent, unique output. This gave two different answers, therefore this table shows it is not a function. If we look over at the giraffe, okay, we can notice that each input has its own unique output. So that would be a function. Okay, so here's some more tables of just random uh, information. We don't know where these really come from. But again, we can determine if they are a function or not a function by looking to see, do we have multiple inputs that are the same? No, these are all unique on themselves um, and they all generated a unique output. That's awesome. If you look over here on the inputs, um, also remember our inputs can be considered the domain and the range. Okay, so if we look at the domain here, uh, it looks like we input two, two separate times. If this is a function, I should get the same answer back. So if this out inputted two and I outputted seven, then this should input two and output seven, uh, but it didn't, it outputted an 11. Uh, so this cannot be a function. If we look down here, oh, look at this. Every single input gives an output of two. That's okay, that is still a function. If we look over here though, okay, we input negative one twice and we get a three and a five. Those are two different answers for the input of negative one. Therefore, this cannot be a function. Okay, going back to our iguana and giraffe uh, lengths and heights. Again, we know which ones are functions or not functions. Um, we can take this data and imagine the inputs as the x's or the domains. Um, and these are the y's or the ranges. Okay, um, we can take these ideas and we can graph them. Um, those graphs would look like this. Okay, right now I want you guys to go ahead and copy these graphs into your book. Um, this should take you a little bit of time. So go ahead and pause the video and copy these over. Okay, when we look at graphs, we can tell whether or not it's a function by using a thing called a vertical line test. So what you do is you can take a pencil um, and you run from left to right across the graph, just like this. And what happens is if your vertical line ever crosses through two points at the same time, it is not a function. So if you notice, when we draw this vertical line here, it crosses through this point here and this point here, which means this is not a function. You could say this fails, fails vertical line test. Okay, if we run our vertical line over here, we notice we never cross through the same point twice. Therefore, this must be a function, okay? So we have this thing called the vertical line test. And it says that if a line crosses through two points at the same time, then it is not a function. We use the vertical line test when we look at graphs to determine if something is a function or not. Uh, next, I want you guys to pause the video again and I want you to copy these graphs into your notebook and then I want you to determine are they a function or are they not. Okay, now that you've finished uh, writing this down uh, and taking your guesses, uh, we'll go over that first thing when we get in uh, to when I see you guys next. Um, the last piece I want you guys to write down uh, is something that's not on the math web, um, however, it is useful sometimes, and these are called mappings. Okay, mappings. Uh, and a mapping looks like this, in where you take your domain and you write everything down in your domain, uh, and then you write all of your range, uh, and then you connect the arrows. So what this is saying in this is that 14, the input of 14, generated an output of 5. Uh, 16 generated an output of 4.5, 18 generated an output of 4, and 20 outputted 5.5. Uh, um, we can write our domain as a set of numbers. Uh, we can write our range as a set of numbers. Uh, we can also recognize these as sets of ordered pairs. 
So let's see, you would have 14 comma 5. Uh, you'd have 16 comma 4.5. You would have 18 comma 4. And of course, 20 comma 5.5. Okay, just another way of writing points or ordered pairs, okay, is showing this input on the left or your domain and drawing arrows to what the output. Now I'd like you guys to see what that looks like when you have when you don't have a function. This is an example of a function. This is a function. Okay, let's go back to the um, the giraffe and the iguana. Okay, the giraffe and the iguana. So if I were to look at the giraffe and the iguana, okay. So I'm going to make a mapping of the iguana. Uh, I'm going to write all my domain on the left. So my domain is, let's see, uh, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, there's no point in doing repeats. I know we do 4 twice, uh, but we don't need to write it down both times. Uh, our entire domain is just 2, 3, and 4. Uh, my range, I have four different answers. I have a 30, 31, uh, 37 and 40. That's my range. Um, and now I want to use these ideas to go ahead and finish my mapping. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to be like, hey, two, two maps to 30. Okay, three maps to 31. And then four maps to 37 and 40. Now this clearly shows that this is not a function. Okay? Each input can only have one arrow going to it for it to be a function. Notice that this has two arrows coming from four. This shows that four outputs outputs two different numbers and that is not okay. That is not a function. Okay? This was the iguanas. Let's take a look at the giraffes. For the giraffes, our domain or our inputs is 16, 18, oh, 14 up at top here, and 20. Our range or our outputs is 4, 4.5, 5, and 5.5. Okay, if we were to map this or draw our arrows, 14 gave us 5, 16 gave us 4.5, 18 gave us 4, and 20 gave us 5.5. Notice how each input has only one arrow showing an output, um, and that means that this is indeed a function. Okay. Um, that's the end of the notes for the day. Uh, make sure you guys are doing this because problems like this will show up on the next homework. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them down and uh, bring them to class with you.